No, they're not. Not at all. They're only corny if you think you don't want to apply them. You see, when somebody says, oh, that's stupid, it's because you might have hit a nerve. How to tell when you're winning an argument? When they start deflecting and don't want to deal with, the, with what you're going after. And I don't mean an argument always hammer and tong, but I'm talking about when you're having a conversation with somebody and you start to get down towards the problem. When they start deflecting and when they start wanting to talk about other things, you know you're getting close. So you better start digging harder if you actually want to help them. If you're in a position to do that. So the point of what I'm trying to say is you can only help someone who wants to be helped, but be willing to help those who are asking even when they don't realize it. Like the young girl that was able to get through it with that, just that one smile. That's a, everything I told you was a true story. I make any, well, the story about Michael Korn wasn't true. <laughs> but the rest of them are certainly drawn from real life experiences. I'll share with you the one story that I was directly involved in. And yes, I told my wife a story, and you don't have to worry about that. But when I was a truck driver, I was truck driver. I was given the opportunity to take a young girl who was 24 years old from Dalton, Georgia, up to Toledo, Ohio. How many here know what a lot lizard is? Yeah. How many here can imagine what a lot lizard is? <laughs> Surprise! No. Okay. They hunt truck stops. And they're called lot lizards. Okay. So I'm down in Dalton, Georgia. It's 95 degrees outside. It's hotter than a pistol, and it's at night. And I'm filling up my logbook, and I hear, oh, I don't have fancy sound effects. <laughs> I'm the cab of the truck. And I look down, and here's this 24-year-old woman. Oh, no. I don't want to deal with this. All she said to me was, do you mind if I get in your truck? It's hot outside. <sighs> no, please, go ahead. Because it was brutally hot outside. I had the air truck running, air conditioning. Okay. She gets in the passenger seat. She makes her pitch. I said, look, lady. I am just not interested. I'm a married man. I want to stay that way. Uh, I am uh, sorry. No. Turn it up. She said, well, I'm really glad to hear you say that. <laughs> Did I hear something? <laughs> so she said, I noticed on the door of your truck that one of the places you go to is Detroit. Yeah, because we had a drop yard in Detroit. I was driving for homes freight out of Brampton. And they had a yard in Detroit. So that's near Toledo, isn't it? Well, I kind of go by there to get to Detroit. Yeah, up I-75. Would you take me to Toledo? Now think about this. I'm a 34-year-old man. I got a wife and a bunch of kids at home. I'm in Dalton, Georgia. I got a 24-year-old prostitute who wants to spend two days with me in the cab of the truck. This does not sound like a prescription for success, does it? So I said, all right, here are the terms. You sleep there, I sleep there, the curtain stays drawn. Fine. I catch you doing drugs or tricks, I'll leave you where you stand. I am not interested in helping you just go up and down the highway doing that. That's not my game. I'm not interested in that. If you want to live under the, if you need something, ask me. I will get it for you. Don't steal from me. Because if you do, you'll find yourself in a lonely parking lot somewhere. And she agreed to those terms. So for two days, we drove from Dalton, Georgia, all the way to Toledo, Ohio. And at the about the 24-hour mark, I looked at her and I said, stop. Because she's telling me her whole life story. She's hiding behind a laugh. But the pain that was in it was unbelievable. She had been betrayed by every man she'd ever known. Fathers, uncles, cousins, brothers, everybody had used her for their own selfish reasons whether physically or emotionally. By the time she was 21, she'd been a prostitute for four years. She was the one that was really pretty, had the thick rolls, had the furs and the coats and all that stuff, but it was empty and she knew it. So she said she wanted to get away from it. She'd known there was a halfway house up in Toledo and that's why we were headed up that way, to help girls like that. But I had to stop her because I couldn't take anymore. I was emotionally saturated. And I said, I just, People do, do you understand that people do not treat each other, at least the ones I know, like you're telling me you've been treated? You don't have to live that way. We get to Toledo, Ohio, and as she gets out of the truck, her name was Stacy, and I can see her as she turns, because you have to kind of turn this way to get down. She looked at me in the face, she says, you know, I've been afraid to get into a lot of trucks, but I've never been afraid to get out of one until now. 
What kind of now? I don't say that for self edification reasons. I say that as an example of the kind of situations, the kind of things where you can reach out with a little bit of wisdom and a little bit of understanding and compassion. It might not be that. Like, I hope you're never called to be a medic on a battlefield and sacrifice your life. I hope you never have to go to somebody's rescue with broken limbs. I hope you don't have to spend two days in a truck with a prostitute. Maybe three. Now trust me, I told my wife that story a long time ago. So, but the point is, you can make a difference in the circumstances that surround you, and you'll know when it's right. You'll just get a, the, you'll just have a feeling. Okay, whether it's pitch it, picking up a hitchhiker, which ladies never do, no matter what you think of. Okay, don't ever do that. I remember one guy picked up going down into Pennsylvania. He had his collar turned up like this. He had his Gilligan Island hat pulled down like that. The hood of his Toyota Camry up like this. And he's standing like this. Okay, this guy is not a professional. So I pulled, him, pulled over and gave him a ride to the next truck stop. But the bottom line is, be prepared to reach out when you can and help the guy next to you when they need it. That's how you build a stronger country, a stronger community, and you will inspire each other to carry on when there is no one there to inspire you. Because the fight that you're involved in about freedom, about integrity, about honesty, about all the virtues, about fair play, all these things, these are all noble Canadian values. The only way to get them back is to actually practice them yourself. You can't be, you can't demand of someone else what you are not yourself. That's right. Personal standards are what is killing this country. How many people will turn a blind eye to a kid in school who's struggling? A teacher is an example. Mm. You know, well, if I pass them, I don't have to deal with them next year. Then the principal says, oh, by the way, you're teaching grade 7 next year. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not him again. It's happened to me only four times. <laughs> but the point I'm making is, be the kind of people you want your kids to be around. Okay? If, if you don't want your daughter bringing home a guy called Snake, okay, which is not a, not a good thing, okay, then don't be a guy that Snake would want to hang around. You know, you can be, you see, the word hero has a lot of connotations. Sometimes we decorate them with medals, very rarely, actually. The real heroes are the ones who are out there who go through incredible suffering, never thinking of themselves, always thinking of the person around them. Mother Teresa, you want to talk about a hero? <coughs> A little Armenian nun about that high. One of my favorite sayings by her is to say there are too many babies is like saying there's too many flowers. You know, she had a way. She first went to Calcutta by herself. This little tiny nun in a city of millions of people. And the only thing she wanted to do was to let dying people know they weren't dying alone. That there was dignity in those people. And she built an organization that is now worldwide and incorporates hundreds of thousands of people helping all over the globe. What can one person do? Ask Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. you know? Ask Stacy. Mm -hmm. Ask your neighbor. What kind of people do you want to be? Because that's where the future lies. Thank you. always respond when we ask for help. And and for that we cannot thank him enough, but we tried. Thank you very much. Well, one more thing. Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs>